And we're back for another round, episode, shenanigan fest, call it what you will, with uh, Austin Evans, your host of the Body Beauty Show. And our guest today, Erilyn Mays from Body Sweet Spa out in Manhattan Beach, California. I've got to say, it's a rare thing to, within the first five minutes of having someone on the show, immediately loving them. Uh, <laughs> Erilyn is the first one I've had on the show where that's been the case. So Erilyn, I'm excited to have you on. How are you? How was life? Things are good. It's definitely a crazy time right now, um, but I'm navigating and I think it's developing uh, changes, which I'm not really, I don't, it's not my comfort zone um, change, but I think a lot of growth comes out of that and a lot of positive things. So just like putting my heels in and having faith that it'll all come out. Yeah. Well, let's, let's start from the top. So why don't you give the listeners a bit of a gist, an idea, et cetera, on what exactly you do, and uh, we'll get started here. Sure. So I have a spa. It's a boutique spa. I own it. I'm an owner-operator. I don't have any employees. Um, I do facials, waxing, airbrush tanning, teeth whitening, um, microneedling, and um, all sorts of fun things. I also uh, custom make fragrances. I do do retail, um, I sell skincare. And when life makes no sense, I make sense everywhere I can. <laughs> that sounds like a book title. When's your book coming out? <laughs> Memoirs of a Brazilian Waxer. I've been working on it for a couple of years. <laughs> really? Yeah. Love it's in it. my mind. It hasn't come out on paper, but one day. Mm. Well, you'll have to let us know when it's done. I'm sure the listeners would love to dive into it and rip it apart and uh, extract all the genius out of it once it's finished. So do let us know when it's done. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so before the show started, we were talking a bit about rules, schmools, breaking them, not breaking them, et cetera. So I think what I want to focus on first is change. I think a lot mm -hmm. of people, especially in California, New York, New Jersey, Illinois, a lot of these states where there is mass infringement on, uh, especially owner operators capacity to get into their spas, wellness centers, et cetera, and do the work. How have you evolved in light of COVID and all the restrictions and lockdowns, et cetera? What does that look like for you? These changes that you alluded to in the beginning of the show? Well, the first uh, three months were more severe and I followed the rules a little bit. Um, but then after they opened up and then shut down a second time, I was doing prohibition skincare and I don't follow the rules. I do my own thing, which has been a beauty of me being in business for myself, not corporate. I don't have to follow the rules. I do what I want. And I think that um, people taking care of themselves is definitely an essential thing because if people don't take care of themselves and take pride in how they look and feel, it's very scary. I mean, I don't know what's scarier, the corona or the way people, you know, let go of themselves and feel depressed. Hmm. Yeah, usually the intervention with almost anything ever from medicine to I mean, you name it, the intervention is usually worse than the ailments, it seems. Um, so I, I think for a lot of people that are in a similar situation where they have some sort of, I don't want to say noose around their neck, but some sort of set of restrictions that prevent them from doing business as usual, um, they have to find a way to get around it, to be creative, to adapt, to improvise, to overcome. So I actually want to be, um, or actually rather, I want to ask you a bit about your, uh, your retail stuff, because I noticed that you do have... Uh, quite a bit in the way of retail on your your online store under your shop section. So, have you seen any sort of impact from COVID with sales on your shop? I'm assuming that you're you're probably uh, watching products fly off the shelves, but maybe you can share well, a bit about that and how you've evolved there. Yeah, it's interesting because when the COVID thing hit, I was doing Corona kits, so I made a facial in a bag because people were so scared. So I gave them the instructions and I copied the facial that I do called the Manhattan Glow. And I provided it in a little bag with instructions for the clients to do it at home. And um, that was interesting. And then I started making my own hand sanitizer. 
and I started selling um, beautiful jeweled masks, you know, so the way of my retail has changed quite a bit because I don't get to have that interaction as much as I did before. But um, just kind of reinventing yourself to survive what, you know, is coming at you. So have you seen a lift in sales since the, the lockdowns began with your, uh, your retail? You know, it's, it's, uh, it, it's really interesting. I have, I would say 65% of my regular clients stop coming in. The, and these are clients I've had for like 18, 19 years, mm-hmm. but where one door closes, another opens, right? So um, my regulars aren't coming in because they're terrified and whatnot, but I'm getting probably about, 10 dozen new clients from other like European wax center and those corporate type places that have to be closed. I'm getting all these brand new clients. And it's been really interesting because with all the new clients, um, it just changes the the dynamics of the business. And so it's been really kind of awesome in a weird way. I, I mean, have it really you, has. Yeah. Well, tell us about that. Cause I'm, I'm assuming you've done something to, to leverage the opening in the market with respect to, like you mentioned, the closing of the doors of these bigger chains, the wax Mm -hmm. centers, et cetera. Have you done something different to get those eyeballs on you and their feet to the door? Well, it was interesting. I didn't realize that Google, I don't know if I can say that, but they put a close on the business. And I didn't realize that until a lady um, informed me of it. And when, at which case I looked at the Google page and I put open. You know, I didn't know that it could just close me. So um, when I'm getting all these new clients, they say, you know, they type in waxing or facials or whatever, and I'm one of the few people that are open. And so your Google listing was was automatically turned and switched to closed. Correct by Google. Yes, (laughs) and I didn't know that. Oh my god! Yeah, they must have done that for everybody. Well, they did. And I, I mean, you know, I have so many different platforms that I have going for the business that I don't, you know, monitor it every day. I don't garden it, you know, so if this one client didn't tell me, I would have never have known. Wow. So I think the the pro tip, yeah, the pro tip here for the listeners is check your Google, my business listing. If you're closed, you're probably losing customers, obviously. So get that flipped back on and then also check your other channels as well. I don't know if Yelp has done the same thing. I'm sure there's some other platforms that have been tempted to, uh, to flip the, the close sign on, but that's something to be mindful of. Certainly if you're in some of these states, like I mentioned, Cali, New York, et cetera. Oh, that's baffling. I, I'm shocked that they would do that without your consent. Yeah, it's amazing. Wow. Huh. Interesting. But once I turn that button on, it, you know, the floodgates came and I've got all these brand new clients now. Wow. Huh. Which is awesome. So you, yeah, no, that is great. That is great. And it's honestly, it's, you know, the, the best, well, I don't know the, if it's the best, but certainly one of the, um, the better of the options um, in the ocean of choices for marketing is to have your local SEO optimized. So when someone yes. types in Manhattan Beach body spa, if you own the top results in the SERP, so the search engine results page, mm-hmm. the first page that shows up in Google, you just you just hoard the the market share for that search uh, or keyword. And it sounds yeah. like you've uh, you've done that. And your name, uh, the business name, is such that. It would naturally lend to that if people are searching for spa Manhattan Beach, um, I would assume. But um, in any case, it's a, it's a good reminder for the listeners to check their their listings and make sure that they're listed as active and open and not closed without them knowing. So thanks for sharing that. I never thought yeah. that, that was possible, but Google continues to amaze in, uh, in a number of ways. But uh, this is not a political show, so we will not go down that uh, tempting pathway to uh, talk to things there. But um, in any case... So what are you doing as of now, or have you changed, evolved, adapted um, any of your marketing strategy as a result of the the COVID insanity? Um, I would say the SEO optimization's probably been the best avenue for advertising. Um, For a long time, I didn't advertise at all. Um, I had two kids and they were small, so I was a good mom and I got to be with them. And I knew one day they would become teenagers. And then I would start working more. So I'm in that spot now. Um, But the SEO optimization, I would say, is the absolute best for me. 
um, as far as advertising because I don't have a huge workforce. Um, so anybody who comes in new, I always ask them, oh, how'd you hear about me? And it's either through Yelp, um, but I like Yelp organically, personally, not you know advertising with them. And also the uh, Google page. It's a huge, mm. huge impact in the positive. Yeah, interesting. So there's something called Rank and Rent, which is a tool that SEO types like to deploy where they buy online real estate. So for example, they might buy the website or the domain name Manhattan Beach Spa. And then they rent out the, the leads that come through that site to the highest bidder. So I would say, I, I think you would agree that the listeners should be really sensitive to how they're ranking locally. So in their specific market, so let's say you're in Chicago and you have a, I don't know, a tanning salon. You should look and see where you rank for those types of keywords in your local area within Google and then mm -hmm. find ways to optimize to be on top because it is dramatic, the market share that those that are in the top three listings get over the bottom and certainly over the you know, pages two and beyond um, on the listing results. So um, is there someone that you've worked with or something that you've done specifically with SEO that's helped? Yes. Yes. Talk to me. Um, so it used to be years ago um, that they do pay-per-click. So every, you know, you can't really compete with the like large kids because they obviously have more money in their pockets. So they would do $40 a day. And that used to be a long time ago. Um, so I found this company called 411 Local. And um, there's lots of companies that do it, but they were affordable for me. And um, they work with me and they handle the Google page and they give me the keywords. And it's been amazing um, because the pay per click, you know, it wasn't something that was doable for me. And now working with 411 Local, uh, they do the optimization. So, being that, you know, I'm not a computer nerd or, you know, even know anything about the marketing, um, it definitely helps to have somebody who's versed in that to, you know, hold your hand and take you through it. It's been amazing. Yeah. So I think tactically for listeners out there that are um, asking themselves the question, I don't even know what SEO is. What is that? Well, it's search engine optimization for the listeners. And it's essentially a shorthand for referring to how you rank within Google for specific keywords. So for Manhattan Beach, California spas, Erilyn has a specific ranking in Google. She's maybe number one, number 10, 100, or two, or whatever. And that's a part of the SEO equation. So if the listeners are right now trying to get an idea, well, how am I doing? Is my SEO in the toilet? I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know anything about computers. I can barely turn mine on. Um, there's an extension from Google called Google Lighthouse. And it's a little extension. It'll pop up in your Chrome uh, bookmark area tab section of your browser. And if you just click that icon and hit generate reports, it'll spit out what your SEO um, and performance and other key metrics for your website are so that you can hand that to somebody and say, I need help. My SEO scored a 50 out of hundred, help me. So you guys might consider doing that a quick and dirty way of doing that or a shorthand um, that's not as uh, nerdy and in the weeds like lighthouse from Google is HubSpot's website grader. Um, it's a fantastic tool. It spits out some recommendations on what you can do to improve your website quality. Um, and uh, clearly what Erilyn is doing is working because her SEO score is, drum roll, 93 out of 100. So she's killing it. She is killing it on SEO. So she's, uh, uh, she's one to imitate. If you're not in her neck of the woods, don't copy her. But if you're in New York, <laughs> I'm sure she will mind. <laughs> Very cool. Well, hey, so you, you've been in the industry uh, for, I think you said before the show, 17 days or years? years? 20 years. <laughs> okay. So you've been in it for a while. So I, I think I'd like to take us down the same tack that I took one of my last guests um, down, who was a hairstylist for 44 years. Incredible guy. Super funny. Had a lot of fun with him. Um, but I am curious based on what you know about the past with respect to the industry, where do you see it going specifically? Where do you see trends? Where do you see opportunities? 
and you can peel apart any part of that onion that you like. But I want to get into the future, given that you have a lot of history, you know the game, you know how the world evolves um, of beauty. So where do you see the industry going? And that could be either, again, trends or opportunities that you're seeing that the listeners would be hooved, let's say, to investigate on their own. Well, um, I think it's interesting just with this whole Corona thing and this last period that we're kind of getting out of or coming from. Um, I don't know. It's uh, customer service has always been a big thing for me. Um, you know, where I have a relationship with clients and things of that nature. And I feel that because the corporations are having to shut down, people are having to go other places and kind of reinvent themselves or try other places. Um, I think it's given us a good opportunity and kind of a pause to, um, get back to what's important in a way. Uh, I think so much becomes production and volume and, you know, things of that nature. I don't know. I always believe in establishing relationships with people um, and my customers, you know, and keeping those relationships for years. And, you know, once you do that, Obviously, I, you know, every year I usually go to a show and buy a new machine or do something new. So I constantly change my uh, repertoire of services um, to keep evolving and to, you know, give my clients more things that they can partake in. So it expands, you know, my customer base and the services that they can achieve from me. Hmm. So are there specific things that you're seeing that are areas of opportunity in wake of, or the wake of COVID or otherwise? Um, well, I, I, like I said, I think, you know, to be able to jump into those people who wouldn't normally have access or even understand, you know, um, about that personal relationship and that connection. Like a lot of the clients that are coming in today, they're like, wait a minute, it's you. We always see you, not somebody else, you know, and giving yourself um, a thumbprint or a personality, you know, to have um, presence, you know, with people and make an impact because yeah, you can go get gas anywhere and it doesn't really matter, you know, but if you go to a place where you feel, um, you know, recognized or acknowledged, you know, people want to go back to that because they're craving right now, I think, um, interaction with people. And so I think it's solidifying the way that I've done business. Um, it's just been in my innate nature to establish those relationships, but I definitely feel that it kind of sets you apart. And this is a good time where people can try something out like that. And they realize it's a big difference. Um, you know, obviously services going forward. Um, I think any kind of beauty care, you know, whether it be your teeth, your hair, your tan, your body, I think all of those things, you know, help people navigate through life and make them feel good about themselves. And we always want to improve upon that. Yeah. So have you found, or let me actually set this question up here because I think the, um, the listeners haven't been able to interact with you like I have so far with our staggering 40 minutes of knowing each other um, at this point. <laughs> I obviously don't know you that well, but my general read of you is that you are radically authentic and you don't care what the context is. You are you, and if someone doesn't like you, go to hell, I don't care. I mean, <laughs> and through that, what I assume happens is you win people over for life as a result yes. of your authenticity. Is that yes. the case? 100%. Yeah. A hundred percent. How do you do that? How do you, how do you absolve yourself <laughs> of the fear of, well, what if I piss this customer off? Then what? I don't, I don't think about that. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely a people pleaser and I invest my energies in learning about people and listening to them and being there for them. Um, I'm a very authentic person and if I, I don't do synthetic. Yeah. 
except for my tans. Those are fake. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you know. fillers are fake. A lot of what we do is I, fake. Well, yeah, well, it's it's yeah. a help. It's a, it's a compliment. Well, my tits it's are not... real. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our first, our first radically honest person about her. Uh, well, anyway. Yeah, I love yes. it. That's great. That's great. Hey, me too. You and I both. They're both real. I love it. Yeah. Well, I, so here's, here's the thing. I suspect that a lot of people hide behind this veneer of what they think their customers want them to be instead of just being themselves and accepting that as a result of that, they're going to be polarizing. They're going to have people that do not like them or even hate them, but they're going to have customers that love them and never want to leave. And that's a hell of a way to be sticky with your customers so that you don't have this constant fear of competition. You know, yeah. I like what Peter Thiel says about competition, which is that competition is for losers. Yeah, there's really, I mean, we've all got gifts and we're all unique in our own way. And there's definitely people I, in the past have had other technicians of different kinds in my space. Um, and I've overheard their conversations with their clients and there's no way that I would want those clients, honestly, um, because they're just not of the same fiber. Um, but I think if you are genuine and, you know, and authentic that the people who appreciate that, um, gravitate towards you. And actually I think it makes your life so much easier because if somebody's not of my vibe, they're not going to like me and I won't like them. So goodbye, you know, find yeah. somebody else. Um, and that's, and that's okay. You know, I mean, there's enough bodies and, you know, people in the world for everybody. And, uh, you know, not every therapist works great with every person or not every, you know, and that's okay. But to be honest and be true to yourself, I think is a really important thing in life. Yeah. And I think frankly, it has a significant impact on the, the key KPIs that uh, a lot of business owners should be tracking things like top line, bottom line revenue, acquisition costs for customers, uh, customer lifetime values and all these other fun KPIs, et cetera. Just be you. Stop trying to be someone else. Be you. Yeah. If you're abrasive, you know, the, one of the terms that my girlfriend uses for me is I'm obstreperous, which is noisy and difficult to contain. So fine. Cool. That's, that's what I am. I don't care if you don't like it. If you don't like it, take a hike. And I'm honest with myself. I know like we were talking before the show started, I took a personality assessment. I scored a two out of a hundred on politeness, but bizarrely a 70 out of a hundred on compassion. So, uh, riddle me that riddle me that, um, in any case, <laughs> in any case, in any case, well, here's some good news that you may have not heard of, um, that the listeners may not have seen either because it came out four days ago, uh, from the American spa.com publication. So the American Academy of Facial Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery, or the ARFS is their grotesque acronym, um, has identified a trend that they deem selfie awareness that has driven oh. a younger set of patients into facial plastic surgery offices, et cetera. Now, I would imagine that the reason why this is interesting for me living in the world of non-invasive technology for fat reduction, et cetera, is that the truth is more people are lining up out the door and around the corner for a scalpel-free alternative to get the results they want than turning to the scalpel. And I'm wondering if you're seeing something similar too, since you have uh, reopened, well, or <laughs> reopened in a prohibitionist <laughs> fashion we <laughs> talked about earlier. Are you seeing something similar yourself with your customer base? Well, I mean, I think it divides down two lines, you know, um, obviously going under the knife, um, you know, it, the potential, there can be very detrimental consequences. That's always an option, you know, um, and if people want to take that, fine. I mean, you're dealing with kind of a life or death possibility and also to, you know, the cost of things. And I think it does divide, um, the customer base, you know, there are those people. Um, but I definitely think more the natural holistic ways, um, uh, because let's face it, we're all aging. It's happening, whether we like it or not. But I think to be able to um do that in an eloquent, sort of gradual, you know, classy way is really um 
you know, good. I, you know, if you put something on somebody that doesn't fit their frame or doesn't work for them, you know, people look at it as like, oh, nice surgery, you know? So I think, you know, we are who we are, we're beautiful as we are, but to, um, you know, help enhance that, but not detract from who you are. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I agree. I agree. Well, I, I do want to be sensitive to the fact that we have about six minutes before we need to hit the road and get back to our, our regular work. Um, so okay. let's leave the listeners with a couple uh, actionable insights, takeaways, somewhere, something in between the two. So um, again, thematically, levers and landmines. This is the section of the show where you share, if you want, or whatever you're willing to share, things that have gone or that you have done that have really boosted the station or the state of the business and then the opposite. So things that were a huge hits and things that were, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. Don't ever do that, listeners. Avoid my mistake. Is there anything between the two or on either end of the stick there that you'd be willing to share with your audience? Sure. I think, you know, having passion and being into your business. Um, I think I shared with you earlier, you know, when I was a mom and had two kids, I worked three days a week and it was perfect for my lifestyle. Um, and I knew one day they would become teenagers and I would have more time to work. I think being present in your business and, you know, really investing and being there a hundred percent, obviously people feel that. Uh, if you have other personal things going on or you're kind of not into it or you have distractions, um, I think that can really, you know, I think it executes and people feel that. Um, and I think to keep progressing and evolving and looking at new opportunities, techniques and things like that, I think that's very positive as well. Um, with that in mind, um, I have bought a machine that I really didn't like. And I went off of the um, conversation of a very awesome client who I had faith in, bought the machine. I hated it. So if you're going to buy any new machines to keep yourself evolving, uh, I would say do the research and make sure it's a good fit uh, for you and your business. Um, the machine was fine. I just didn't like doing it. And I didn't care how great the results were. I hated it. <laughs> so, which was, I, I have to know which machine yeah! was it. I don't know. You have to that. tell us. You it was, gotta it tell was a us. It's my, my micro a micro current machine. Um, I have ADD, and it's just boring for me. It's boring. I like immediate results. I like things to happen, and that's actually another thing that I've you know built my business on is I'm result driven. I don't need time for the fluff and just like you know, I, I'm all results because if I didn't produce the results, people wouldn't come back to me. Did that answer it? <laughs> so you're, 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 you're the woman in, in front of me in the Starbucks drive through screaming at the barista. I said, I wanted no. it at 141 <laughs> degrees. Why is it? 142? No, 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 no. I'm not that particular. <laughs> trust me. That's not my jam. No, no, not at all. But, but yeah, no, it, it's interesting, you know, so to, you know, if you get the opportunity to try a new machine modality or something, um, I have to love it in order to execute it. And if I don't love it, I'm not going to do it. It's just like if I sell things, you know, if I don't believe in it, I can't sell it. Mm. It's not my, it's not my nature because I'm going to be accountable for that client enjoying it. So I have to be a hundred percent behind it. Yeah. Love it. It makes a world of difference. I think. I am inclined to agree with Mike Rowe, but retain optimism that you can transcend his position, which is that you should not follow your passion. You should bring it with you to which I respond. Eh, can't we do both though? I think what so. Do you mean? Well, so he's a big fan of going where the opportunity is. So he's a big advocate. He's the guy from dirty jobs. Uh, the guy that went around and interviewed plumbers and septic yeah. tank guys, people that were, were very wealthy because they were doing jobs that nobody wanted to do because they were dirty but that's where the opportunity was. So his, his advocacy or his position of advocacy is that you ought to follow where the opportunity is and then bring your passion alongside with you and not pursue your dreams of, you know, I want to be a painter or whatever, which, eh, I can well, see both sides. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, the, the beauty, if you can incorporate your passion and I, I, yeah, I can kind of get that, but 
you know, ultimately I think you have to be true to your heart and to who you are. Cause you know, I think of now that my kids are going into college and things of that nature, you know, Oh, I want to be a doctor because I'm going to make money. Well, what drives you? I mean, I think if you do something that you're passionate about, you have what you need, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think I hear stories of kids, you know, going down that road and obviously it's expensive and it's a lot of dedication and time spent. Um, I've been very fortunate in my life that I don't look behind with regrets because sometimes you might continue down a path that you're not feeling, but you've already invested so much that you keep going. And um, I've just been very fortunate that I, I'm not in that position, you know, and I would hope that people follow their heart and can do things that, you know, provide joy and happiness in their lives, whatever it is, I don't care. And I think you'll have the money you need. Well, the words of, <laughs> I'm struggling to find the artist <laughs> as I type this into Google. Oh, yes. Okay, here we go. In the words of DHT, which is that the artist? That must not be the artist. Uh, Rock sets from the album Look Sharp from 98. Listen to your heart. Listen to your heart and follow it or don't. Choice is yours. You're an adult. Listeners, do whatever best suits you. Uh, but I think there's a, there's a space to do both follow your passion and bring it along with you as well. So let's do this. I know we are tight on time. We always run out of time, but uh, let's leave the listeners with, with two things. So if you had the opportunity to coach somebody that was in your shoes, but 17 years ago, when you took over the business, what one bit of advice would you give them to help them improve the quality of their business revenue or anything in between? Wow. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a big one. Um, wow. Well, I think just keeping a pulse on the business. I mean, there's always something new to unfold, something new to learn. You know, my daughter's doing TikToks. Now I'm doing TikToks for my business. I don't even know how to log on to a podcast. Are you kidding me? How am I going to do a TikTok, <laughs> right? But to, to kind of keep an open mind and realize, um, you know, you're growing, your clients are growing, your business is growing. Um, there's going to be successors and there's going to be failures, but through all those experiences, I think we evolve. So don't give up. Um, you know, it's just life. Life is on life's terms. There's going to be ups and downs, but to weather it and to, to try to derive the rain, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel or the silver lining or whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, go with the flow on that because it will push you into a new area. And if you stay fluid like that, I think you can grow with the times and, um, you know, ultimately evolve. Did that help? I would say. <laughs> I don't know. Is that making <laughs> I will get an answer out of you, Erilyn, if it kills me. <laughs> Look, that was good. That was good. I, and I agree. I think the, the takeaway is something like this. And it's going to sound trite. It's going to sound like a bromide. It's going to sound banal. It's not. The reason why certain things sound like that is that they're true. And their simplicity is deceiving because it's actually really damn hard to do. So I think the thing that stood out there was don't quit. No. So what, what else could you say to that point? Well, here's an idea. I believe that the formula for success is something like taking action and taking the next action. And here's the zinger though. It's not just taking action because that's, you could just say, well, I'm spinning my wheels. Well, you're not going anywhere on the drag strip. You're just burning out. But the key is to reduce the gap, or the latency between action one and action two, et cetera, et cetera. So take action. Don't give up. And in the words of Rick Astley, Marilyn, I'm never going to give you up. All right. How's that for an ending? <laughs> Amazing. All right. Well, fair enough. So awesome. we are out of time and uh, we have customers to get back to serving. So let's, uh, let's wrap the show today. Erilyn, where can the listener find and or connect with you if they want to rack your, uh, your brain, grab your ears, or come in to have a treatment done? Yeah. So my website is Body Suite. It's B O D Y. S U I T E S P A dot com. Um, I also, you can look me up on Instagram, Facebook, under Body Sweet Spa, um, TikTok, 
I don't know what my handle is on that, but um, let's see what else. Um, or call me, 310-702-4507. You can also text me on that number because that's my cell phone. Love it. Love it, love it. And I can love anyone that has a name that belongs in the Lord of the Rings film uh, <laughs> because her name is so cool. Erilyn with a Y. Erilyn Mays of Body Sweet Spot on Manhattan Beach. Go see her. Go get a treatment done. You'll be glad that you did. And uh, Erilyn, thanks for stopping by. I enjoyed our time together. Thank you. Me too. Have a good one. You too.